Nano Nano, everyone, it's Jess Hearts, and today we are making the house from Mrs. Doubtfire. Now, I'm aware not everyone might have seen this movie, especially if you're a younger person, and that's fine. I will be spoiling stuff though and talking about some sad topics in this video, so be prepared for that. Either way, I encourage you all to watch this movie as soon as you can, and the reason why I decided to do this build is because it's actually Robin Williams' anniversary on the 11th of August, so this weekend. He sadly passed away in 2014, and like, honestly, he touched so many lives. He was such a charismatic and intelligent human being, and he really inspired me when I was a youngin' to just let go and be the weird and wonderful person I am today. <laughs> My boyfriend can attest to this. It took me a long time to be able to watch Mrs. Doubtfire and Flubber again because it would honestly just make me so sad. I legit cried, well, teared up when Robin Williams died. I definitely idolized him a lot. It probably didn't help that he looks a lot like my dad, in my opinion. Anyway, I used to watch all of his stand-ups and all of his movies from, like, a very young age, and, like, from his serious roles to his very goofy and quirky roles. I was also very tempted to make The Flubber House, but I think Mrs. Doubtfire has a really great underlying message that I think deserves diving into as well. Okay, to start off with, Mrs. Doubtfire was released in 1993 and was produced by Mr. Robin Williams himself and his ex-wife, I believe. And Robin plays Daniel Hillard. He's a freelance voice actor and that's where we set our scene. He's playing both a little bird and a cat. It's kind of like Tom and Jerry, I guess, except when the bird is about to die, he asks for a cigarette and starts smoking. Daniel goes off script and starts coughing and saying how disgusting and bad smoking is. And his reasoning for this is because it's a children's show and we shouldn't be promoting smoking to children. He's got a great moral standing and I would 100% agree, but this in turn loses his job. Then I've got to do what I've got to do. Afterwards, he goes to a surprise, pick up his kids, eldest Lydia, Chris, and then Natalie. And if you recognize Natalie, that's because she also plays Matilda in Matilda, which is another one of my favorite movies and books. But it's Chris's birthday, and Daniel wants to throw a party without the mum knowing Miranda. She gets a bad rap, and I'm kind of with people there, kind of, but I think she has to be the strict parent all the time and clean up Daniel's messes all the time, which puts strain on her, which I think is fair. Teamwork is key, people. Teamwork is key. Pretty much Miranda is at work and gets called home due to a disturbance. She finds a house in ruins, kids everywhere, there's a petting zoo, the cake she brought home for Chris is being eaten by a miniature pony. It's just a whole calamity. Daniel looks like he has been caught with his hand in the cookie jar. And Miranda gets mad, kicks everyone out, and, and it cuts to them arguing. Short story short, Miranda wants a divorce. Here comes the main tension. Daniel's life is his kids. He loves them with all his heart and he can't stand to be away from them. I often notice how in this movie, his main drive as a whole is to be with his kids, not with his wife. I think that's pretty telling. I'll touch on that later. The court grants Miranda sole custody, much to Daniel's chagrin, but shared custody will be allowed if Daniel finds a steady job and a place to live within three months, which... In my mind, in this day and age, is bloody impossible. It's a bloody housing crisis. Ugh. Anyway, he goes and gets a job working in the back of a TV station, but in the process learns that his ex-wife Miranda wants a housekeeper. Since he's kind of nuts and loves his kids, he changes the ad number so no one can ring her. And he starts calling up and pretending to be these crazy people. Hello? Which is hilarious, I might add. Then he calls up with the sweetest Scottish nanny voice, Euphigenia Doubtfire. She blew the phone call out of the park and Miranda invites her over. At this point, a sane person wouldn't do this. They'd back out. But Daniel rings up his brother and asks for a nanny makeover because he's a special effects artist, I believe. He gets made up all doubtfiery and Miranda hires him. The kids are pretty taken aback by how she disciplines him, but then they can't imagine their lives without Mrs. Doubtfire. And Miranda even gets closer to her own kids, and it's just a lot happier at home. Daniel finds himself developing a lot as a person and improving, which makes his living conditions better at his new apartment and his job. But it makes it harder for Miranda because she has a lot of trust in Mrs. Doubtfire, more so than in Daniel. 
But then a really awkward and funny scene happens when Mrs. Doubtfire goes to the toilet and Chris, his son, walks in and discovers, oh my god, Mrs. Doubtfire is peeing standing up and he freaks out and goes to his older sister, Lydia, saying how she's a man and that they gotta call the cops. Daniel is outed and he comes into Lydia's room and explains the whole situation to them. And Lydia is super happy to have her dad back. Chris is a bit weirded out, but still happy. And they keep it a secret. The little girl, Natalie, doesn't know as well. Oh, and along this whole storyline, Miranda is also seeing a new man, Stuart, who is also in Miranda's line of work. He's a bit of a snake in the grass, but he wants to really settle down with Miranda and actually, like, loves her kids, which is great. But my boyfriend and I hate him, sorry. Um, It's pretty funny seeing how forward and protective Mrs. Doubtfire is of Miranda when it comes to Stuart. She also damages his car. Oh, I love that. But as we know, Daniel was working at a TV station. Then he accidentally makes pals with the CEO, Mr. Lundy, whilst mocking a very boring history program for kids, only to be super apologetic when he found out he was talking to the CEO. He made the guy laugh though, and I think that planted a seed in the old fella's head. Later on, Daniel was up on the set rapping about dinosaurs and having a jolly good time on his own, and Mr. Lundy spots him and says how impressed he was and wants to go out to dinner to discuss giving Daniel his own kid show, which made me super proud, not gonna lie. But here's some more tension, which stresses me out beyond belief whenever I watch this movie. Miranda is also having a birthday dinner on the same night in the same restaurant. So instead of being a sane person, which, you know, let's be real, the sane Daniel left the building a long time ago. He goes as Mrs. Doubtfire and himself. I'm stressing as I'm saying this. (laughs) Well, he rocks up with the family and Stuart to the restaurant and he sees Mr. Lundy across the room in the non-smoking section. Kind of hilarious how they're sitting in the smoking section and kind of sad how they used to let children in the smoking section. I digress. Daniel switches back and forth from Mrs. Doubtfire then back to himself and things get pretty intense when he gets a bit drunk with Mr. Lundy and then accidentally rocks back up to Mr. Lundy's table dressed as Mrs. Doubtfire and quickly claims it's his idea for the kids show. Smooth. Oh, yeah, and when he went to get changed but didn't, he put a heap of cayenne pepper in Stuart's jambalaya because he's allergic to pepper. Not smooth. Especially since he starts choking from across the room, Miranda screams for Mrs. Doubtfire, and that's where we see the famous scene. Help is on the way, dear! Help is on the way! Whilst Mrs. Doubtfire is giving Stuart the Heimlich maneuver, then saving his life, might I add, that's totally dumb as a thing. He's choking on a piece of shrimp. His throat should have been like swelling, like an actual reaction, but he walks away all fine and just a bit shook. Anyway, he saves Stuart's life, but in the process, his prosthetic mask is partially peeled off his face, and Miranda is freaked the heck out, understandably. The whole time, the, the whole time, you would, the whole time. The whole family storm out, and Natalie looks so confused, the poor darling and Daniel and Stuart shake hands like he did save his life to be fair then it cuts to a very sad scene where they are back in a custody hearing Daniel says that he's done what the judge required and explained why he did what he did and the judge seems to pity Daniel but also thinks his explanation is just all an act of a disturbed person which is just it breaks my heart he just wanted to be with his kids You can also see how Miranda's feeling a bit bad about the whole situation, but her lawyer looks like a sadistic mofo, like, You will have- I will have- Look at her face! Mm. Anyway, Daniel gets restricted supervision with his kids on Saturdays, so he has to be supervised. But when the kids and Miranda are prepping food, they all admit to missing Mrs. Doubtfire and how much better their lives were with her around. And Miranda quickly shuts that idea down, saying, you know, they can't keep talking about her as if she was a real person. But then they suddenly hear a voice. They hear her voice. They walk into the living room and she's on the TV. There's a new children's show, Ephigenia's House. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. It's a really difficult word. Of course, it becomes a sensation and it's amazing. Shortly after that, Miranda visits Daniel on set and tells him how much better things were when he was involved. And they change the custody agreement. Shared custody. Woo! He gets the kids after school like he did, I guess, when he was Mrs. Doubtfire. He drops off the kids and Miranda invites him in, but he politely declines. 
Um, my boyfriend sees this as a maybe she misses Daniel, but I'm unsure. Let me know what you guys think. It cuts to Miranda watching an episode of Effugenia's house and Mrs. Doubtfire opens a letter from a viewer, a little girl, whose parents have recently separated. She goes on to respond that you should never blame yourself for your parents breaking up and that it's common for kids to do so. If there's love in a family, that's what makes it a family. No matter how small, big, whether it's just you and your uncles or your grandparents or your mom or your dad, if there's love, there's a home always gets to me that ending. Now, I come from a small family. My parents are together, so I have no idea how painful it can be dealing with a separation or a divorce or breakup in the family, but I can empathize a lot. Most of my friends have parents whom aren't together, and I knew them when their parents were separating. I think the message of the overall movie is that it's okay if your parents aren't together. People often say stay together for the kids, but if the parents aren't meant for each other or, or they don't work well with each other, it might be best for them and their children if they aren't together, but still work as a team. Miranda and Daniel are clearly very, very different people. Miranda seems more logical and practical and Daniel seems a bit more goofy and spontaneous. And I'm not saying people who are like this can't be in a relationship together. I'm saying these two have attention due to those differences, hence why they don't work well together. I think this movie is like a beautiful way of comforting children and teenagers if their family is going through a similar situation. I definitely think this would have helped me if that happened in my family. I think it's also a reminder that life isn't a fairy tale and that not every mum and dad get back together. Some people I know wish they got back together and had a happy big family. I understand that, but I think the message that some mums and dads don't get back together is a good one. It might make kids feel less alone. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about this and how you interpreted a movie. I hope you guys enjoyed this movie theme build. It was honestly a load of fun to make. Um, yeah, and let me know what you think of this build. If you think I did a good job, have you seen the movie, have you not? Or if you have a different opinion on the end. Either way, I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. But i got to get going. So remember to subscribe, like and comment, tick that bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I do a great impression of a hot dog.